today we are moving into the world of fractions. Now to understand fractions, we have to go back to our number line again. Now think about the number line. It is full of whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, and we've talked before about that space between the whole numbers is actually a magical place because it's full of other numbers we just can't see. And if there's an infinite number of those numbers, and those numbers are what are our fractions. So if I take the space between 0 and 1, and I cut it into five equal sized sections, so I have the first section, the second, the third, the fourth, and this becomes the fifth. The section itself becomes my numerator. So my first section's numerator is one out of a total of five sections. Therefore, that's my fraction, one-fifth. My second section, the numerator becomes two over a total number of five sections for the fraction two-fifths, and so on. We see three-fifths, four-fifths, and then we get to five-fifths, and we know that five-fifths is the same as one. Now, notice on my number line, I've also added decimals, because you can name a fraction and a decimal interchangeably. We can go back and forth. So one-fifth as a fraction is exactly the same spot on the number line as two-tenths as a decimal. And two-fifths as a fraction is exactly on the same spot of the number line as four-tenths. So I can choose to either work in decimals or in fractions. It's up to me because they name the same spots. So let's go back to our fractions. Let's look at fractions visually. And today we are only working with multiplying fractions. So if I have this multiplication problem, 5 6 times 1 half, remember the top number of my fraction is my numerator, the bottom number of my fraction is my denominator, well I can show that multiplication using a model. And the way we show it with multiplication is we have a big rectangle. And I'm going to take my first fraction and I'm going to put it along the top, and I'm going to take my second fraction and I'm going to put it along the side. And I'm going to start with the top one. So what this fraction tells me is that I need to have six equal size pieces. That's what my denominator is telling me. So I'm going to come down from top to bottom, and I'm going to divide this rectangle into six equal size pieces. And I'm going to check one, two, three, four, five, six. Now the top number, my numerator, 5, tells me how many sections I'm going to color in. So I want to color 5 out of those 6 sections. And I'm just going to do some squiggles. And I'm done showing 5, 6. So now I have to show 1 half. And for this second fraction, I'm going to work from left to right. So again, the bottom number, or the denominator, tells me how many sections I need to divide it into. So I need to divide it from left to right into two sections. So I'm going to take a different color, and I'm going to divide that into two sections. And I want to color in one out of those two sections. So now I'm going to color in like this. Now you can see that suddenly I have a whole bunch of squares here. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That becomes the answer of my denominator. And when I look here, whatever rectangles are colored by both blue and red become my numerator. So I see both blue and red there, so there's one, two, three, four, five. Now this only has red, so I can't use it. These only have blue, so I can't use those either. This has nothing, so I can't use it. So my new numerator is five. So you can always demonstrate multiplication using models uh, for fractions. However, it's time consuming. It takes way too long to do this. So there's got to be an easier way to do the math, and there is. So if we think about multiplying fractions, all we have to think about is numerator times numerator equals the product numerator, and denominator times denominator equals the product of the denominator. So if I have one-third times two-fifths, and notice I used a little dot, because in math we use a little dot often to, to represent multiplication. Well, all I have to do is 
1 times 2, because that's numerator times numerator, which is 2, and 3 times 5, which is denominator times denominator, which is 15. And if I came back and looked at my original model, if I did 5 times 1, it equals 5, and 6 times 2 equals 12. So it's far easier to actually use this algorithm for it. So, something you may not have seen is actually reducing to lowest terms before I actually uh, multiply. And I love to do this. This is my preferred way. So what you're going to want to do is instead of starting off with numerator times numerator, you're going to look on the diagonals. So I'm going to look right here. And I'm going to ask myself, is there anything I can divide into both 2 and 8 that's going to reduce it and make it smaller? Well, there is. I could divide both of these by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Now I'm going to look on the other diagonal, 3 and 5. Those are both prime numbers. I know I can't reduce those at all. So now I have a numerator of 3 times a numerator of 1, because I just reduced it. Let's make that a little bigger. And I have a denominator of 4 times a denominator of 5. And when I do numerator times numerator, 3 times 1 is 3. Denominator times denominator, 4 times 5 is 20. Notice my answer is in lowest terms before I e have even finished the problem. And it's because I reduced it there. Now, sometimes it works on both diagonals. So let's take a look at one that has two diagonals. So I'm going to look at 6 and 9, and I can know I can divide 3 into both of those. 9 divided by 3 is 3, 6 divided by 3 is 2. And then I'm going to look at 5 and 10, and this one I can actually reduce. Because 5 divided by 5 is 1, 10 divided by 5 is 2. So it actually becomes 1 times 3 over 2 times 2, and that becomes 3 fourths my final answer. Already reduced. So I love that because most people forget to reduce to lowest terms. So our last part of this is what if we have a mixed number? Well, we know we only can have a numerator times a numerator and a denominator times a denominator. So when I have a mixed number, I have a whole number with a fraction with a numerator and a denominator. Well, I can't have that. i got to have a single numerator. So what I want to do is first I want to estimate and think, okay, what kind of uh, should my answer be? So 3 and 1 fifths, well that means this number is between 3 and 4 on the number line. Well, it's much closer that, to 3 than it is to 4, so I'm going to estimate 3 and 1 fifths as 3. And 2 thirds is between 0 and 1 on the number line, but it's much closer to 1. So I'm going to estimate 2 thirds as 1. So 3 times 1 should be about 3. I know my answer has got to be closer to 3 than any other number. Well, what I'm going to do to get my single numerator is I need to change this mixed number to an improper fraction. And remember, how you change it is you're going to take the whole number times the denominator. So I'm going to think 3 times 5 is 15. Then we're going to come and add that numerator. 15 plus 1 is 16, and I always put it over the original denominator. So 3 and 1 fifths can also be called 16 fifths. Now 2 thirds is, is fine. So now I'm going to look, is there anything I can do on my diagonals? Well, in this instance, there isn't. So I'm going to do 16 times 2, which is 32, and 5 times 3 is 15. Now, I'm going to give you a hint. If you start off with a mixed number, usually your final answer is a mixed number. So, uh, 15 goes into 32 two times, because that's 30, and then I have 2 left out of the 15, and that would be my final answer. So, I think that about covers it for us today. Now, it's your turn. Good luck, and enjoy your math.